All right, so let's get going. Uh, we got a lot to cover today, so we'll have some more folks hop in or they'll catch it on the replay. But uh, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Uh, I want to introduce uh, Jason Poole, if you're not familiar with him, and Director of uh, Product Marketing for Nutscaler, uh, UK-based. Uh, done a lot of great work helping me put this together, and actually he, he led it, so I won't take hardly any credit for it. But uh, thanks for doing this with me, Jason. This is really cool. So uh, looking forward to the discussion we're about to have around Netscaler and uh, how Zintegra can, can help customers uh, leverage and expand and, and troubleshoot and support and everything under the sun with Netscaler. So welcome. Let's see. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, who is Zentegra? So if you're not familiar with us, uh, we're a reseller services and solution provider. We really kind of look at ourselves as a VAR 2.0. Uh, we've done a lot of work over the past decade building a community around Citrix and Netscaler specifically. Um, and we have a full staff of, of, of client executives. A lot of them came from the Citrix world as well as a lot of expertise in the consulting division to help uh, with the deployment management and expansion of your uh, Netscaler and Citrix options that you have out there. So with that, we're about 11 years old this summer. Um, we have a full portfolio of, of many other technologies and, and vendors that we support as well. But again, we kind of come back to, as a as a VDI uh, end user computing focused company. So we know that to ensure that your uh, users are successful and happy with the way that um, the apps and desktops are delivered to them, that there's a lot of underlying components to make that happen, as well as securing the, the path for those access layers. So that's where um, Zintegra is capable of providing the full stack solution for you guys. Uh, in the picture here on this slide is Andy Whiteside. He's our uh, CEO and founder, and he also uh, positions himself as a, as a consultant at heart. So uh, he's out on the road doing the consulting and, and helping develop the solutions for all of our customers as well. Again, here we'll see that your value-added reseller as well as a slew of other components that play into this slide here. Uh, this is some of the components that uh, make us a little bit different that bleed into that bar 2.0 message that we try to, to deliver. So Zentegra itself, uh, again, we're focused on end user computing and to help with that, we offer a lot of micro assessments. So we'll see here in the, and these are zero cost micro assessments to you to see where we can help support you guys um, from your Netscaler deployments. So feel free to reach out to us on that. You'll see that we have, um, we're giving away two Ford Broncos uh, around VMworld World time frame. Um, so that's going to be a pretty, pretty big uh, um, shindig that's going to happen here in the near future. Uh, so two lucky contestants will uh, that have registered and done simple things like micro assessments with us, they qualify for that. And then in the lower right-hand corner here, you see we make it fun. So the community build out. Uh, we turned a day of learning about some of the uh, secure private access into a, a, a second half of the day. We went out four wheel in, in the in the woods and had a, a, a grand grand old time with a lot of our customers and uh, folks that really really make a big difference in the community from the Netscaler and Citrix side. So with that, um, we'll, I'll hand it over to Jason okay. so he can sure kind of kick Thanks, off the sir. conversation here. Thanks for that, Chris. So we've got a lot of stuff to come us, to cover today. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably move along uh, at a fair clip, but you can stop us at any time. Uh, you know, it's the end of my day and Chris has got nothing else planned and he's just gonna go four wheeling. So just anything you wanna ask, <laughs> pop it in the Q&A tool and we'll take those questions. And I think you've got some uh, some poll questions to, to spring on the, the audience occasionally, right? Yeah, so I'll pop up a couple poll questions here. Uh, it'll just help us kind of gauge the conversation and where we mm. should uh, focus some of the topics. But I'll kick that off now and I'll leave it open for the next couple minutes, uh, next five minutes or so. And then if you guys can browse through that while you're listening and uh, select some of the options, really appreciate that feedback. So I don't know, does the poll question block the slides or does it not? I, I just don't know. 
It, it'll be a little widget at the bottom and they click the button, oh, okay. it'll pop right. up the poll. Fair enough. Okay, so let me say, I, I'm Jason Poole. I'm in the NetScaler team. I've been doing this for since forever. Um, I think I started in layer four to seven in 2000 with Altion. I've been various other places and settled on NetScaler for the last 15 years nearly. So there's a lot of NetScaler experience. It's not all good, but, but it's mostly good. So that, that's me. Okay, so NetScaler is about delivering applications. That's really what it's about. So in fact, that's all that Citrix is really doing is delivering your applications one way, one form or another, whatever applications you've got, it's about delivering them and optimizing them so that your users and you uh, get the most productivity and the best experience. And so why is that important? So, you know, we come click this round to applications and businesses are increasingly reliant on applications for their very existence. Employee productivity, customer engagement, almost every business, business process is underpinned by a software application of some sort. Um, you know, a recent survey by Deloitte and MuleSoft found that as enterprises accelerate their digital transformation, they continually add even more applications to their ecosystem. And they found that an average company has 1,061 applications deployed. That's in the average business. And this compares with only 976 from their corresponding um, survey last year. And that's a staggering number. It's, it's almost incredible in actual fact. And to be fair, this resulted from companies with more than 1,000 employees. So it might be a little skewed. And perhaps more realistic is Okta's Business at Work report, which I was reading, which cites a more reasonable number of 187 applications on average, but even that is a lot and it highlights the same year on year upward trend. So whatever number is more accurate, the volume is high and the trend is upwards. And it's that dependence on applications and means that business have to ensure that these apps are always available, they scale to meet demand and are secure. It's an almost existential threat for businesses today. And gone are the days of it's good enough. Things have to be top notch. That's just all there is to it. And so the current trend, you know, talking about applications, the current trend in application design is away from the monolithic to a more flexible microservices based architecture, this app modernization. And while this new approach uh, definitely brings business advantages, it's easier. Uh, modular construction, it's simpler to deployment with DevOps and CI CD pipelines and all this. So, and it's much easier to scale an app on demand. Uh, and microservices are undoubtedly more adaptable and lead to business agility. Uh, you can add new features and services very quickly, but they are more complex and they create challenges. So there's more decoupled components. So that means every communication is a network call, which makes for more complex communication pathways that you have to establish and secure. And by their nature, microservices change rapidly and that ephemeral component uh, is problematic for communications as well expo as exposing new vulnerabilities. And there's just in general, a broader attack surface. And, it's, and there's a big debate in my house at the moment, whether, you know, which architecture is more secure, microservices or monoliths. But in any case, security is a must for all applications. And whichever is true, uh, the industry is moving this way and how they're moving this way. By uh, IDC predict that there'll be 750 new cloud native applications by 2025. And the challenges they present have to be solved. And that um, leads us to the next piece that, you know, we're, we're starting to deploy applications in a, new, in a new way. This cloud adoption is continuing apace. And according to Flexera's latest state of the cloud report, 89% of organizations are adopting a multi-cloud strategy. And as they shift those workloads to the cloud to reap the benefits, as we've said, of business agility, IT flexibility, and resource scalability, as well as the cost optimizations of an OPEX model, so they create complexity for those applications. The increasing trend for the, the apps to be deployed across multiple environments, on-prem, multi-cloud, this creates complexity and inconsistencies that uh, really businesses aren't totally equipped to deal with. And that's why they need things like an ADC. And this is why, you know, this reliance on applications and their evolving nature 
this is where Netscaler comes in. Netscaler is an application delivery controller, and it's designed to ensure that your applications are delivered and secured wherever they're deployed, whatever their architecture, and wherever they're consumed. And this is becoming more important, uh, as we've mentioned, that changing nature of applications and a deployment, deployment and the evolving site landscape. So this is going to become even more important. So when we start talking about ADCs, which mostly started life as load balancers, the functionality, and you'll see this in the market growth numbers, it, it's just going up and up and up because customers realize they can't deliver their applications effectively without the added, you know, without that performance, the security and the um, observability that an ADC will bring them. And Netscaler, you know, it is the king of the ADCs, in my opinion, of course, you know, it's deployable just about anywhere on-prem, uh, in the cloud, and you can deploy it as, as automated, this infrastructure's code and so on. And it's got a breadth of, um, what's what I'm looking for? Form factors, that's what I'm looking for, you know, right. with uh, physical and virtual and public cloud and bare metal and multi-tenant and all of this stuff. And the great thing about Netscaler is that it operates as a single code base. So that means that wherever you put that Netscaler, you configure it in one place, it'll work. You can just cut and paste that configuration across to another place. And no other ADC can have that kind of um, approach to how they're delivering and securing applications, even in container worlds, for goodness sakes. So this is the single code base across multiple form factors. So deploy it anywhere and maintain operational and security consistency across all environments. And that's really important. Yeah, it now, is. Yeah, it absolutely is. Now, many of you, so, you know, why, why take my word for it? Well, actually, ADC Netscaler has been a beacon of innovation over the last two decades with a focus on addressing customer needs. And that's where we've we've recently not separated from Citrix, but we've become our own entire uh, entity in terms of a business unit. And we're focusing on continuing that innovation for what our customers need. So if you look at this little roadmap here that we put together, you know, it started life as an, a single pass load balancer, and then we added an integrated SSL capacity. Then we you know, upped it to the first 10 gig load balancer. Then we added multi-feature. We broke away from the shackles of a single core to multi-core process. We were the first ADC to do that. We were the first full-featured virtual ADC. We were the first to introduce a multi-tenant ADC, so you can consolidate multiple load balances into a single hardware box, which our customers loved over the years. And we've introduced clustering, so you can get 6.4 terabits of layer seven throughput. Uh, we've never had a customer who's needed that much, but you know this is the sort of thing that you can do. This, this, this breadth of firsts that come with Netscaler is staggering. It, it really is. And, and look, don't just take my word from it. From the very beginning, um, let me flick on to the next slide. Only Netscaler adopted that software first approach that gives it the performance that the customers needed and the flexibility. And I'll look at some of the customers, you know, we'll show you that it's relied on by some of the largest businesses out there. Um, you know, the top two clouds, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, and even IBM actually are using a lot of the Netscalers to make sure that their services are available for their customers. Um, you know, the way that we've managed connections was instrumental in dramatically reducing the back-end server requirements and lowering the TCO of some of the largest internet properties. One very, very large search engine started life with Netscaler, and they rem lots of them remain customers to this day. So if you ask, every time you ask Siri something, you're going through a Netscaler. Every time you make a purchase from large e-tailers like Walmart or Amazon, you're going through a Netscaler. Every time you search on, searched online for things, you went through a Netscaler. Every time you traded a stock, a Netscaler. You go to gambling sites like Bet365 or uh, gaming sites like uh, Demonware and, and EA Games. These are all going through a Netscaler. And we confidently predict that 75% of internet users will go through a Netscaler every day. And if Netscaler can bring value to these customers, it can absolutely help you. That's a good point, Jason. I mean, uh, Cisco as an example, used to have their ACE low balancer and they, you know, instead of fighting and competing against Netscaler, they just, Cisco proper adopted 
You did. Netscaler. And you could get 99% of the features when you bought it from them. But that just kind of shows that, you know, mm. it, it was best of breed. And there was just such a gap there that a monster like Cisco didn't want to, like, try to compete with it. Yeah. And, you know, just pulled it in. A lot of these large networking vendors rely on Netscaler to deliver their network to their users and to their customers, right? That's yep. uh, absolutely the case with Netscaler. But, you know, the thing is, a lot of you on this call might know Netscaler as the de facto gateway for Citrix environments. You know, once we required, we worked on this, and this was something that, you know, we, we looked at and we, we, we worked on how do we provide the best uh, experience for our users. And some customers use only the gateway functionality, uh, but many go beyond the gateway, uh, excuse me, go beyond the gateway and then start to do things more like high availability of the Citrix components with improved productivity. So it might be your storefront server or even your, your TFTP servers, whatever it is you're using to provision this. And it's then also uh, another big thing for us was customers were starting to use the Netscaler to provide uh, high availability of the data centers. You know, their businesses rely on delivering their applications to their users. Productivity dies if a data center dies. So they would have backup data centers and use the GSLB that's built into every Netscaler to, you know, it's been a big use case for our customers over the years. And lots of people are using it today to provide this high availability, to provide the, the components and the data center uh, for maximum uptime. And others are starting to use the smart access control. Now, smart access is something that we talked about a lot in the past, and then we, you know, we, we, we stopped. But our, a lot of our customers are using this. So you may or may not be aware that you can control not only what people can see and view uh, in their Citrix environments, but also what they can do within it. So there are 64 channels in an ICA session, and each of those channels can be switched on or off. So you can configure this in your Citrix environment to switch off um, printing, for example, or drive mapping. But with Netscaler, it integrates with the Citrix environment so that you can do this dynamically. So you can check where someone's coming from. And if they're not in the office because you know the IP addresses, you can say, right, for Chris, I'm gonna switch off printing because I don't think that I want you to be sitting in a hotel and using the business center and printing sensitive information and then walking away and forgetting mm -hmm. about it, right? Or we it might happens. say, yeah, we might say, look, Chris, you're not on a corporate laptop, so we're gonna switch off drive mapping. I don't want you to save anything to that hard drive because I don't know if it's encrypted. And that exactly. smart access, that dynamic access uh, that's provided by Netscaler is invaluable for so many of our customers. And there we go. And, and moreover, what they're doing, what customers are seeing now, what we've built in is because Netscaler sits in this fantastic position in front of everything, it sees the entire network from end to end, and it can provide a lot of insight and, and combine that with the insight that the Citrix farm gives you about what users are doing and so on, then you can bring in together this holistic end to end from user to, to server to everything in between, right? You get full visibility of that. And that's what Netscaler brings to the table inside the Citrix environment. So there's definite value in that for sure for all of those on this call. And maybe they're doing something else with it, but I guarantee you most of the people on this call are probably putting Netscaler in front of their Citrix environments, right? Exactly. Yeah. So the thing to remember, although maybe you're doing that, there, that and that's great. You're, you're definitely benefiting from, from Netscaler, but the fact uh, you're here means that you probably want to learn about the additional value that your Netscaler devices can bring. And that you, you may already have that functionality and you've just not enabled it. So it might be a freebie upgrade because you've already got it, but you've just not enabled it. And we'll look at how Netscaler's promise of performance, security, and observability help your business thrive. So can I close that poll? If I do that, does that close it for everyone or it just gets it out of my screen? I'll go ahead and end the poll. Okay. All right. No, that's fine. I just, I just, it's blocking my view of the slide here. I have to look over here to my other thing. Okay. All right. Okay. So well, let's, let's talk a little bit about this. Let's look at performance. Let's look at why performance matters. Okay. So if we take a look at that, I've got a few statistics here and a few um, 
thoughts on the, oh, I can't click forward. Okay. So we all know that performance matters because whenever we use an online app, whether for work or pleasure, we know that slowness kills. And you could say that only the fast survive. It's not just the young, but it's the fast as well. So, you know, why do you think that Google search is so plain? Because it's quick. And they found that 400 milliseconds of latency reduced daily searches by 0.6%. And a recent survey by Salesforce um, quantified what we all know. 80% of respondents agreed to their question that the experience a company provides is as important as the product it sells. Now, this might adjust with price, but the sentiment is definitely clear. And when the app is the only engagement you have with a customer, this is absolutely critical. And moreover, another Google stat, 53% um, of visits are abandoned if a site takes longer than three seconds to load. And moreover, downtime costs money. If you can't interact online with your customers, they go elsewhere. And that means conversion rates drop with performance. And there is that iconic statistic um, from Amazon that said with each additional 100 milliseconds of load time, it costs them 0.1% in sales or, or something like that. I know I did an extrapolation that it was 1% uh, cost them 1.6 billion or something like that, or one second cost them 1.6 billion. So I've actually seen that extrapolation come back to me on the internet. So it's like, hmm, I, I made that up. So there we go. But <laughs> You know, the, the, the official, the original statistic, 100 milliseconds in load time costs them 0.1% in sales. And that's a staggering amount. Now, we're not all Amazon, but we do have businesses to run. And that brings me to my third statistic, that if your, cons if your consumers do abandon and they go elsewhere, they might not come back. We've all done it. We've I used to buy from this one computer vendor and then they were offline and I, I had to have something quickly. I went to another one. I haven't been back. And that reputation damage uh, might be terminal, as, as is the case here. And Microsoft recently reported that, as I said, 58% of consumers will happily switch companies because of poor exp experience. And we all know that um, we're more likely to discuss bad performance than good performance. Right, Chris? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how many people do you tell when, when you've had a bad customer experience? You go and you tell your friends. Something goes well, you, you often forget to tell. And I think someone quantified it in some social research saying that you're four or five times more likely to tell about bad experience. And the end result is that bad experience or slow performance of an application has a direct impact on the business. And I, I don't think that we can, we can emphasize that enough. So how does Netscaler help you? I might need your help a little here. So first and All foremost... Right. Your experience is bad if you can't get there, right? So if it's not available, that's a pretty bad experience. And Netscaler has inbuilt load balancing and health monitoring to make sure that no user's request is ever sent to um, a black hole. So you're oh, always yeah. going to get service, right? Yeah, we can play out that a little bit. I mean, that just the, the monitors that are constructed that, you know, there's a, a slew of them that come canned in, in mm -hmm. the operating system, but there's additional ones that you can build and customize and take them to the next level and get really granular and tricky on the way that you steer your traffic based off performance metrics or availability yeah. or speed on the wire. And that really kind of comes back to the Netscaler having a, a form of AI in it where it, it knows what's happening inside of the data center. It's not going to send your users to downed websites or, or poor performing servers. It's going to take that that responsibility upon itself and steer people where they need to go. And using the JAR algorithm that's built into Netscaler, which mm. is different from the CARP algorithm, um, you're going to see 5x performance gain on your CPUs being able to make those decisions. So that just kind of points out that you can do a lot more and place a lot more responsibility onto the Netscalers versus some of the competition out there. Right. So availability is one thing. Intelligent. I mean, that's why we've, we've, we've seen customers abandon their competitive devices when they're putting in front of Citrix because we've taken the time to build precise health monitors because it's the health monitoring that gives you availability. Low balancing gives you the scalability. And, and we've got that in spades as well with the auto scaling and the clustering, as I said, massive amounts of, uh, of capability there. But I'm just Click over to the end user experience. And I put content switching in here because this allows you as a business 
to make more intelligent decisions about where you send which users. You can either by cookie or by whatever means you want to categorize your users, you can steer them to a separate set of servers or specific content, whether it's mobile, whether it's application, uh, a particular application, whether it's in English or Spanish or German or whatever. Oh, yeah. You can do a lot of this. But but more than that, and something that you know, I just was thinking about was that when you go buy a ticket online and you can't get through and it just sits there, then you think, oh, this is broken. I'll go somewhere else to buy this ticket. But in actual fact, Netscaler has inbuilt surge queuing and, and things like this. So you can actually pop up a, a little note for your users or for your customers to say, by the way, we know you're here. We're, we're coming to you. So please wait and we'll get to you as soon as we can. So that really improves the customer experience. And more Definitely. importantly, I think with this, you know, the performance with lower TCO, that's really important. So, you know, the fact that Netscaler adopts this single pass architecture really lowers the, the, the requirements. So you can think, do things like connection multiplexing, SSL offloading, in-memory caching, all of these things will lower your TCO by, re by reducing the load on your backend servers so that you need fewer of them. And that's why many of those large search engines paid us millions of dollars over the years, not because they love us or it's a beautiful box, and it is a beautiful box, but because we've saved them a stack of cash and made their websites fly. Right. And, and you know, also you, you can optimize what you send and there's a whole host of uh, features that are built in like compression, data manipulation, protocol optimizations, which will help your applications perform 5x better. But you know what? It doesn't just start when you reach the data center in the application. It starts as soon as users request your content. Netscaler's intelligent traffic management has an entire virtualized map of the internet and in terms of performance. And what you see on the screen there is our radar. So this is, this is obviously not real time. This is just a GIF. But this is monitoring internet traffic in real time. And it takes 10 billion data points a day across a billion user sessions from 50,000 different networks all over the world. And it maps the latency to every cloud point, every CDN point, and even your own data center if you take part in this. And what this allows us to do, these real user measurements, they update the internet state and gives you complete visibility from end to end, from user to server and the internet in between. And from there, you can take, you can make intelligent decisions about where to send your users. If you've got two or three data centers, you can guarantee that you can get that user, any particular user, if they've never been to your site before, based on our, our, um, our data that we know, we can guarantee you that we can get them to the closest data center and re improve that application response time. And that is really important to so many of our customers. And also it helps you with the business continuity. We've seen so many times where a customer has been using cloud data centers and the cloud's gone down, right? Netflix has suffered from it. They've just gone off, off, off the screen because they've, they've put everything in AWS. But, you know, we, we see that we can then reroute around it. I, we've actually delivered Super Bowls um, with streaming through different CDNs. And we've, when, when there's been a problem, we've seamlessly switched users across to another one. That is a very powerful thing to have. And not only that, you can take a historical look at this data and determine what's the best place to put my particular content so that my users will be, you know, my audience is close enough to the content so they get the best experience. And that's something called Netscaler ITM, Intelligent Traffic Management. And it, I think that it probably warrants a, a webinar on its own. Otherwise, I will talk all day about it. <laughs> so, so, Chris, I, I wanted to say at the start, actually, is I see this as, you know, the first in a series. We'll give you an overview today. And if you invite me back, Chris, we can certainly go in and dive in deeper in each of these topics later on. Oh, of course. Yeah, awesome. yeah, we can definitely spend all day talking about that. So, I mean, it's, we look at like the footprint here just on this map. That's typically anymore you're seeing interactions yeah. across the globe. So it's not Absolutely. just the regional pops to like the quadrant of the uh, part of the country you're in at this point anymore. It's uh, we're, we're spanning the globe. Oh, I, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Um, so moving on. So security. So the... Typical CISO has a lot on their plate in today's application environment. And many Citrix customers we talk to openly share their concerns over securing those applications and that infrastructure. And things we hear frequently include 
evolving deployment scenarios, making it difficult to protect applications. It's really hard to define a perimeter and establish trust. And things have to be done differently today. Apps themselves are changing, as we, we mentioned earlier, and this is increasing the, the attack surface area. But also, the increase in encrypted traffic um, means that more malware and threats are hidden from traditional detection techniques. You absolutely have to start looking at how you get, can look inside that if you want to protect those applications. And indeed, many CISOs tell us that the lack of visibility across their multi-cloud environments leaves them in a position which it's really difficult to define and maintain that consistent security posture. They're using uh, one service in AWS, a different one in Azure, and something else on-prem, and they all have different features and functionality and are all operated in different ways. And you know, maybe one of them doesn't have the feature that you rely on, or right. maybe you know, you've misconfigured it because you're used to doing it one way. And this is a massive issue for the people we talk to about security. This consistent security posture is really, really important. And yeah, it's also definitely, been, sorry, go ahead. Jason, sorry. I was going to state off of that, kind of play off that comment there. You know, we're seeing it more and more where some of these clouds are adopting their own version of uh, web application firewall mm -hmm. or the load balancing components in there. And it's bringing up, um, you know, concerns to the customers because they're like, well, you know, we're putting a net scaler behind this component of, say, AWS. And it's like, well, you're having a lot of problems because really that's already at, in that scaler. There's 4,000 features in, the, in yeah. that scaler piece. You don't need to go out and, and get educated and learn and have to support this native version of mm. a, a kind of newer feature that the cloud is offering you. Here we have a tried and true multi-decade mature platform on the same code base across all these different clouds. If you just learn one, you can do it anywhere. Absolutely. That, that is a, a great point and well made. And we see this a lot with customers who either they've been on prem with NetScaler and they're going to the cloud and they don't know if it's Azure this and AWS that. It's like, just take your NetScalers with you. With yep. full capacity, it's absolutely feasible to do that. But other way, back to the security problems, there's a shift from perimeter to application security because that's where the vulnerabilities are. You know, we've pretty much, I won't say fixed the security around the infiltration at the network level, but it's the applications because there's so many and they're written so fast, often by the cheapest bidder, right? So that they, they're not always up to as secure as they could be, let's say that. So we absolutely have to watch that and make sure that we can um, ensure that the applications, uh, you know, we, at least we can mitigate the risk. We can't always stop it, but uh, we, we can at least mitigate it. Uh, and similarly, uh, there's been, uh, you know, the, the application, sorry, it's the new frontier in security. Um, and you have to tackle it head on, uh, especially with threats becoming so much more sophisticated and it always seeming like hackers are one step ahead of you. You have to start to protect what you can. Can't guarantee you get everything, but you have to take that responsibility. Otherwise, there, the business impact is very dramatic. There's legal financial and reputational um, implications for not securing your applications correctly. And so how does NetScaler help with that? Well, um, yeah, so your sensitive data is, is open. It's open season on your sensitive data if you do not take the right precautions, right? Okay. So NetScaler provides a comprehensive application security portfolio in, integrated and inbuilt to everything we do from access control, which many of you may well be familiar with, with the gateway, but also the fully baked in VPN, the full AAA suite for authentication, authorization, and um, accounting. All of that is so important. And if you can make sure that only the right people have access to the applications, then probably maybe half of your job or maybe more than that is done. You can't trust everyone and you, things will get through, but it's a good start, right? Has yep. to be. Yeah. And, and then SSL management, we talked about SSL hiding all that malware. Well, you have to, you know, you have to make sure that you are encrypting things. And, and with NetScaler, you can define, manage, and enforce your corporate wide uh, SSL policies from a single point. And with single click A plus certification, you can make sure that all your data in transit um, is well protected. And the other thing we mentioned there was about the SSL offload. 
I freely admit, Netscaler doesn't have everything. It has most things. It's got the bot management, web app firewall, and a lot of API security, but it's not an intrusion prevention service. And it's not, you know, um, an SWS, a secure web gateway, although it does have the capability. So you need to sometimes um, look to other devices. I, I get that. I totally do. But if you're starting to hand off encrypted traffic, that means those devices have to be bigger and more powerful to decrypt the traffic, do their inspection, and then pass it back. You can control all that on the Netscaler. You can use much few, many fewer and much smaller devices for the more application-specific um, uh, security inspections that you want to do. Similarly, go ahead. I was going to say also about single click A plus certification, you know, mm. that's a moving target as we've seen over the years. It's like, okay, you're good for the, like today, you know, three days from now, it might shift just depending that's on right. it. And that would typically involve another engagement. Like you know, I need you to come back in and work on my cipher list and the protocols. And mm -hmm. now you guys have introduced this single click A plus certification. I mean, that's, that's a great, uh, you just made things so much easier for customers. Yeah, we're monitoring that how that changes um, over time, and then we update the, the the like you said the protocols and ciphers and so on and so forth. But more than that, we've got you know inbuilt the more traditional application security, the bot management to protect you from the automated threats. And look, if nothing else, forty percent of traffic is bots. And imagine if you could reduce your cloud bill by forty percent by not processing bot traffic. That's not going to add to your business. I know sometimes they do, but if you can control that, that's got to be a win. And that's an easy thing to switch on um, in your Netscaler today. And then the web app firewall. So we've got the OWASP top 10 protection. With the integrated web app scanners, we're trying to make it simple for our customers to come along, run the application scanner against their application, and it will make recommendations about what things they should do to secure that particular application. That's really powerful and really important for many of our customers. And then, of course, APIs, that's the, the new buzzword, right? Everyone's talking about APIs. APIs are just another door into the hotel of application X, right? And we need, you know, we've been sitting in front of all these applications, protecting them and securing them and delivering them. We see these APIs. We've seen them forever. We've been an API gateway before API gateways were cool, right? We were looking oh, yeah. at APIs and we're, we can control them. We can enforce authentication, all these great things. And then we can run them through the, the, the web app firewall and prevent the bots as well. So this brings this all together, this consolidated security approach with that single pass architecture. So we're doing all these inspections in one go so that you can use fewer, smaller devices and respond more quickly to, um, to customer requests. So that's something that no one else really has. Very true. And to play out the bot management component as an example, we had a, a pretty large staffing organization come to us. And since the traffic was flowing through the Netscaler, they assumed that that's where the, the issues with the application and delivering that on right. the public side were. They're like, everything works fine internally, but when you're external, you know, something's wrong with the, the Netscaler. Like, well, let's turn on the bot management component here and see if there's anything that might be hindering your application. And yeah. within six hours, we're able to identify over 100 different bot IP sources that were hindering the performance really? of their application. Wow. So just by, by bringing that insight to the customer and making some, a little bit of configuration changes to block some of those bots and then and play with their their edge firewall from i think it was palo at the time mm. they were able to they didn't have to increase the bandwidth it wasn't a bandwidth or like an overhaul that had to be done on the netscaler the netscaler was able to capture what was hindering those applications and adjustments were able to be made within just a few hours to get them back to the performance they were expecting out of their solution and with that, it's very, it's very apt, nice little segue into observability, right? Yep. Like very you said, good. you've seen the, 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 um, the things that it can do. And in this interconnected world of, of complex world of applications that we inhabit today, a small change can have a big impact and that's only going to expand over time. And with observability, you can see an issue like a slow network or an application misconfiguration, observability is your true friend in the darkness. It spreads a light, just as Chris described about the bot management piece and, and the automated threats. 
it spreads a light on what's happening. So from your infrastructure with observability, you can get to see what's going on. It reduces your time to identify and remediate issues. It can detect your cloud latency issues, for example, or resource utilization optimization. And also it helps your infrastructure and operation teams work together and collaborate. And application performance with observability, you can rapidly identify issues um, across cloud native or monolithic apps, whatever, and it helps your IT ops and DevOps collaborate more effectively. And similarly, application security, when they build applications, you know, DevSecOps teams and just your regular security teams, if you can see that you're under attack, just like Chris said, that's exactly the right thing. Well, you can see you can do something about it. You cannot fix what you don't know is broken, right? Amen. And similarly, with the end user experience, if you've written this massive application and your customers are not using it, why is that? You know, you need to look and see what's happening. How long does a page take to render? Well, all of these things go together to, to make up the um, observability and it's only going to get become more important. And Gartner predict that 30% of enterprises um, will adopt more observability techniques to improve the digital business service performance um, by, by next year. So that's great stuff. And so why, why Netscaler for observability? Well, um, Netscaler is, here we go. It's an ADC and it sits in a very unique, very, a unique position in the network to gather telemetry and provide visibility. As an agentless tool, there are very few products out there that can come compare. So we see all the traffic in and all the responses out. And not only do we collect information about the application the infrastructure and the network and security, we collect that raw data. We'll also analyze it to provide meaningful insight into what's going on. And whilst it's not necessarily the, well, it is an observability platform, but it's not famous for that. It does integrate uh, uh, and you know, ADM does interrogate and visualize that insight. We'll look at a few screens of that as well. But the real value for many of our customers is how Netscaler integrates with most observability tools, both open source and vendor source like Spunk, Splunk, Prometheus, Elasticsearch, Zipkin, and so on. And whilst we see that more in the cloud native operations, but we are starting to see certainly Splunk appearing in regular monolithic applications or traditional data center environments um so yeah prime position to see everything uh, to and from the application so i just wanted to provide you a few examples of the different sorts of dashboards that we have in the adm so for example um you know you've got your your basic one it helps you you know it's intuitive simple dashboards that help you understand the applications which have the problems it helps you analyze and troubleshoot all of those problems from latency to server response time and other things in between. And then also helps you spot trends over time. So you can start to maybe capacity plan. So all of these things are built into the Netscaler. So a few examples here. So uh, view all of your ADC infrastructure in a single place. So you get comprehensive visibility uh, across all the different data centers and it's color coded, you see, well, orange is probably not as good as green. And if it's really bad, it'll pop up red and it'll tell you what's going wrong. And you can organize these however you see fit. So you get to group them in your way. And this will help you find the causes of your problems and spot them very easily and, and, and interrogate what those causes are quite quickly. And similarly, for applications, we give you the dashboard that red is bad, green is good, orange is somewhere in between. So you can see which app of this is demo um, environment. So there's not some customers got real problems, but you know you can scan this really quickly. You've got color coding, you've got application scores using uh, application index, app deck scoring. So it makes it really simple to investigate issues because you can click on these and then drill down and find out what the root cause is. And then you can fix that. Similarly, with application security, you get to see you know, you could assess your vulnerability, you get a threat index of your applications, you know, which ones are being violated, you know, wh where are these attacks coming from? You know, should we check those protections as your firewall up to date? And you can see in this screen that the, we've got the uh, start URL and HTML SQL injection are big attacks going on here. So we need to say, if that's what's going on, 
how much at threat am I? What are my what are my top ten vulnerability or applications under under attack or under threat? And you get to see all this stuff, and then, like Chris said, you can take a remedial action. You can switch on the WAF, or if it's something that can be blocked, like with the bot stuff, block it at the edge. That's cool. Exactly. Yeah, so you get to do all of that really quickly. And as I said, you've got this integrated scanner for um, it's built into ADM. So it will scan the applications and then it will feed back that information into a usable uh, configuration rule set that you can set up. So one of the goals that we're doing with Netscaler, especially around security, is to consolidate, consolidate and simplify. So you don't need a separate WAF and a separate load balancer and a separate um ssl device or anything like that all of this comes as one and we're trying to simplify it for our customers uh, with the help of our partners of course but to simplify um the implementation of the security because we understand it's not as simple as it could be right now right and that seems to be a big help in that direction uh, as well so uh, we're looking at this as uh, being able to more or less pre-populate the rule sets for WAF deployments. And that, yeah. that's that's a big time saver and gives you more visibility and customization than you can take for those applications and the rule sets for the WAF that you apply to those. Yeah, and, and you're going out on a limb here, Chris, so stop me if I'm wrong, but it means that you as consultants for your customers, you don't have to waste all your time typing all these complex rules because this is done for you. So you get to spend better time. It's better used advising them on the general uh approach to their security right and you know that's where you can be more helpful to them surely yeah the WAF has always been like a kind of touch and go thing where it's like you set it you have you have to burn it in a little bit you come back to it mm. you know you make some adjustments and typically that would last you know a couple days while users kick the tires on it and and generate some traffic and mis misusage um misusage. examples for those yeah. for those WAF uh, rule sets and now this is like more or less automating a lot of that and bringing in uh, best of breed and, and predetermined configuration sets that you can more or less just apply on the whim since a lot of these applications are pretty popular. You know, it, yeah. Salesforce, for example, the, those kind of um, SaaS based ones, you guys have a lot of uh, CAN components for those kind of applications that you can just click it, drag and drop, you oh, know, and that's already access and authenticating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's true. But Let's take this one stage further. So one of the most popular things with this is this enterprise-wide SSL policies. And this is something that Netscale has been doing for a while. So you can go in and you can define, I only want to accept this and that and the other, these protocols, these ciphers and so on. And then that will get pushed to all the Netscalers in your estate so that it will make sure that you're never exposed. And like I say, with that A plus certification checkbox now, that makes it so easy. And then we'll track all that and we'll report any violations if a, if a user is using a, maybe they're using TLS 1.0 or, so, or trying to, and you, you've, you've blocked it, or it might be that you've decided TLS 1.3 is the only thing you're gonna accept, but not all the browsers or all the users are up there yet. So you may have to relax a little bit. So you get to run some what if scenarios. If we accepted TLS 1.2, for example, what would it mean? How many more people would be able to get into my environment and so on and so forth. So you get a lot of good SSL management. But most importantly, you get, the ability with Netscaler to bring this all together with Service Graph. So this is the end-to-end -end visibility. Unfortunately, it doesn't show in this, <laughs> this diagram. I did a bad screenshot, my mistake on that, but it gives you that holistic view and it identifies busy services by the size of the node. So you can uh, see some are bigger than others. It tells you if something's good or bad by the color. So green lines are good. That means that communication path is fine. If this was in, Green, it would be better than if it was in red and so on and so on. So you get to determine the dependencies, see what's going to what. So the service graphs, very popular with some of, especially in the microservices world, but also with this global server graph um, that we've got going on too. And I'm just gonna build this one out. So one of the great things here is that we can send raw data to all these different platforms. We get that. But more than this, Netscaler will send processed insight from ADM, which makes it easier to consume and allow more actions to be taken. So as I said, not necessarily, we're not competing to be the next Splunk. That's not what we're gonna do. But what we are gonna do is we are going to provide the best amount of data, either raw or processed to Splunk and to all these other things so that you can do what you want with it. 
but you're starting from a better starting point. That brings us the, the, the security, performance, and observability. But there's another pillar to our NetScaler story, and that is flexibility. And here, what I want to talk about is, as I said at the start, the flexible deployment models, the multiple form factors allow you to deploy ADCs, NetScalers where you need them. You're moving stuff to the cloud, fine. Move your ADC there. You want to stay on-prem, that's fine. You want to consolidate all those Cisco ACE load balancers and your F5s into a single NetScaler, then we'll help you do that. We've got the multi-tenancy box and nobody else has the capability of doing this with a single code base, which gives you operational consistency across all of your environments. And then that leads, of course, to the holistic visibility and observability across all those environments that we talked about a moment ago. Moreover, the flexible licensing options, we offer the subscriptions, whether you want to fix throughput or whether you want to pool all of your throughput and then distribute stuff as you need it. You want to move it around between different environments? Absolutely go ahead. You want to, in, you want to move from some, some from hardware to your software versions? That's okay. You have pool capacity, you can absolutely do that, and you get um, much more granular utilization, and it's a simpler enterprise-wide visibility, and it's all automated through um, these, the NetScaler ADM. So these are the key points that will bring value to your business. And I just got a few case studies I wanted to just discuss briefly. So um, here are three, um, oops, yeah. So Chris, you should, if you've got some more, please bring them on. I'm sorry, I left that on the slide there, but okay. A large transport company in the UK, big Citrix user, <laughs> and they're using uh, NetScaler as the gateway and they're using um, other vendors as their load balancing device. And the implementation of that other vendor hasn't gone smoothly. And every time they've hit a problem, NetScale has been there to, to pick up on it. But they also, you know, as I said, it was, it's, it's a key uh, factor. Their Citrix environment is a key factor for their remote work. And 80% of their people come through Citrix. That's great. But 20% are using an SSL VPN. And they started to hit performance issues with that SSL VPN, but the NetScaler was there. Actually, they bought some SDX devices. And what they're able to do is now they're shifting that VPN traffic into the NetScaler. And then the next step will be to start to look how we might uh, start to utilize the Z zero trust um, uh, environment that we can provide them. So that's the first one. Then we've got this premium bank in the Nordics, and they did not start with their NetScaler journey with um, Citrix, actually, with the being in front of a Citrix farm. They started as a bank, you know, most banks, Chris, as you know, their IT is like an archeological dig of stuff. And at the bottom, there's always a mainframe, right? And mainframes oh, yeah. are expensive. And when they started to go through their digital transformation and people started doing a lot more online banking and mobile banking, all of a sudden they had to process all of this stuff and everything's encrypted. So they're trying to feed this encrypted traffic into their mainframe and Lordy knows it, it, it doesn't like it. They would have had to have upgraded their mainframe to massive amounts, but instead put a NetScaler in front of it, offload the, the SSL decryption and the mainframe copes admirably. But they didn't stop there. They started to move on and say, well, look, you know, we're using it for this environment, why don't we use it for the general stuff and making our applications run smoother? And so they put it in front of their application, their banking applications for their users, and all of a sudden things worked. And of course they're in the Nordics and they've got lots of different languages up there. So they've got GSLB and they're providing better customer experience for their users using that GSLB. And then what, what else are they, they said, well, we're using it for this. Why don't we utilize the same devices for as a WAF. So they're using the WAF to block like 80, 90% of the traffic. And then they are exactly doing what, what we said of, you know, they're decrypting it and forwarding it onto an intrusion detection service. And what that means is they don't need massive servers for this because they're doing and controlling the, the SSL. And so it can go uh, build, uh, sorry, be inspected and then pass back to the next for load balancing and, 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 and more application uh, management and traffic management and so on and so forth. So that is a great example of utilizing and getting more, more value out of the net scalers that you own. 
And this last example, an insurance company, and they started off life as Netscaler in front of Citrix, and they had another vendor in front of everything else. But what they do is 50 million insurance quotes a day, and they've got an SLA of five milliseconds for this. And they found, you know, they employ people just to minimize that latency. And they found, actually, if we start to use that Netscaler, it's got much lower latency, and that matters to us. So we'll start to use this for putting in front of our insurance quotes. And then they started consolidating their WAF because they had, I think it was Imperva. And I said, well, we don't need to pay for that because it's already built into the device we're using. So let's use that. Using SSL offload for simplified management, controlling those applications. Of course, they're PCI DSS compliant. They have to be compliant. So they're using NetScanner to help them with that. And then, of course, they started to move things around to Azure. And so they're using pool capacity to cope and bring value to their environment, their business um, environment using Netscaler in, in that respect as well. So the moral of the story from these three customers, and this is just three of many, is that you realize more value from the Netscaler when you use more of the functionality. You know, $50,000 for a gateway device to access Citrix, you know, I'll take your money all day long, but it's not really the value that you're expecting. But using that box for other things really increases the value. Obviously, you wouldn't spend 50K. You'd probably have a smaller device and you'd be using it for other things within the Citrix environment. But if you can branch outside of that, you'll realize a lot more value um, in your business using Netscaler. Awesome, Jason. Well, as we kind of approach the top of the hour here, and I, I could talk about these examples all day long. I've got a million <laughs> of them. But... Um, but we'll be cognizant of everybody's time because I know some of them are leaving, but I appreciate everybody um, hopping in and answering the poll questions. Um, I put my email address into the chat there. So if you want to reach out to me and have any additional conversations or take advantage of like these micro assessments and I get you signed up for the Bronco giveaway, you know, yeah, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll steer you in the direction that needs to go and introduce you to your client representative so we can get some of that kind of put together for you. Um, but hopefully you guys got uh, a lot of good information out of this. Jason, you're incredible. Uh, just uh, you, that, that blew me away. But uh, as you know, we could talk about, we'll, we'll put a series together here and kind of- I'd like that very much, deeper. Chris. I, I, I really would. Um, you know, we, we can put some more focus. We, we've covered a lot today maybe a little too much, but I get excited and I can't stop myself. I apologize for that. But maybe we can narrow it down and do something more specific on performance or something like that. Maybe yeah, check with your customers, see what they want to learn more about. And then we can, we can uh, cater yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you very, very much uh, to everybody that joined us. And, and again, Jason, that was incredible. Very good job. Thanks a lot. I know you probably want to drink some water now. <laughs> I know how these things go. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, till next time, Chris. Yep. Thanks, Jason. Thank you, thank you everybody for joining.